Notification volume, zero percent. Good afternoon, and welcome to Blindformers. I'm your host, Blind Prime, and for today, I have Earthrise Alternate Universe Optimus Prime, utilizing the Earthrise Optimus Prime mold, which is the traditional boxy truck mode. Um, I think it's a cab over, Mack truck or something. Anyway, I thought it looked cool. It's flat-facing semi. You know, one of the big old flat-faced ones. You used to see all the time on the roads, but not so much anymore. Now, this dude is alternate universe Optimus Prime because he represents what happened at, you know, in the beginning part or the end of the first act of the original Transformers, the movie from 1986. You know, he, uh, spoilers, died. So when he died, he apparently got the color scheme that is on this figure. Um, I got him because whenever I got my last stimulus check, uh, regular Optimus Prime was actually more expensive than alternate universe Optimus Prime, so I picked up an AU. And uh, I also got Shattered Glass Optimus Prime, but that's because I wanted a ratchet, and I couldn't find a ratchet for cheap. So ended up finding getting a new Shattered Glass Optimus Prime just to get Ratchet under the value that all the scalpers had given it. Now, let's talk about his size. So, yeah, here it is. So, he stands at see, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 23 studs tall. Zing! Kind of a similarity in that. There's there's few things over 23, and 23 seems to be like the the larger figures are usually all 23. It's weird. When we get into some others, they'll be taller, but that's because I use things like foot pads. For instance, Shockwave. All right, let's give him the comparison with his buddy Bumblebee. You know what? I would have been heartbroken if Bumblebee was the one that caused Optimus Prime to get shot instead of Hot Shot. Let's see. Yep, Bumblebee goes up to Optimus Prime's hip. Yep, his knee comes up to just below the edge of the hip. So, Optimus Prime is all legs. Look at them legs. Yeah. Yeah. Bumblebees don't play basketball. <laughs> hey, let's get into his transformation. So, for Optimus Prime, oh, before transformation, always siege ports. Let's let's discuss them. So, Optimus Prime is unique because he's got hands that move back and forth. They're articulated, kinda. You can move the clump of four fingers away from the thumb. Hey, you have him do it a stop motion or something. He's made like that so that you can take out... Oh, let's, let, let's get in that in a second. We're still discussing siege ports. Don't get ahead of yourself, Prime. Alright, so they work as siege ports, so we'll count them. So that's two, four, and then one on each shoulder is six. None around the head, but there is one on his back, so we'll count that as seven. There are none on the upper thigh, but there is mm, no. There isn't even one on the lower thigh, unless where's the gun? Let's check that spot because I actually had one before. And nope. And nope. So he's got seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's got two siege ports on the bottom of each foot, and it comes out to be eleven. I was still keeping with the average of robot modes having eleven. Now, let's talk about his cool play feature uh, of the Matrix of Leadership. So first, you want to peel back both of the uh, glass panels on the front of the on the front of his chest. Easiest way to do that is put your finger pads on it and then pull them away. 
Uh, there should be enough friction with your fingers and the clear stuff they use for glass that it'll just open up. It, it may be stiff in the beginning, but trust me, it'll open up. Then take your fingers and just kind of wobble your uh, matrix of leadership around a bit. Uh, you may need to take and flip him like that so it just falls out. It will, and you can close up the chest area and raise him up like this. So you want to take his arms and kind of raise him above his head a bit. Then you rotate them just slightly and uh, this thing kind of hangs on the thumbs. So you rotate the hands so that the thumbs are facing out. You hook both thumbs into either handle of the matrix and then you can lower his hands. So it looks like he's gripping it. Uh, sadly, this matrix does not come apart, which I'm a little upset by, but there you have it. He uh, doesn't have, it doesn't do very well, but you can still have it happen. So that's a cool little play feature that he has a storage bin for his matrix, and he comes with the matrix. So once again, to open up the matrix storage bin, just pull back on both of the windows, everything pops up easily. And then to store the matrix, you just want to use your finger to reach in there and find the two little nub things. And those things go into the handles on either side of the matrix. And it just kind of sets in there. And then you want to shut the doors. It may try to fall out, you can push it in there more, but if you give it too much force, then it's hard to get out. And I recommend just setting it in there lightly and closing the doors. It will stay in there when the doors are shut. Okay, it's done with that. His weapon transforms. It, uh, you just, it just uh, folds in half and then snaps together. It will be used during the transformation to cover up a spot. So there you go. One more thing about him because he does come with a trailer. Oh, look at this trailer. It's an awesome trailer. We'll discuss more about the trailer in a bit. First off, we're going to discuss the trailer accessories, which consist of this crazy uh, meta medical robot thing. Uh, let's see. Let me just... Um, hey, crazy medical robot. There you go. And it folds up. It, it's very similar to the one that um, you got in the original but you can, uh, the one in the original G1 had a little seat up there so a little MicroMaster guy could ride in it. It was pretty neat. Well, smaller than MicroMasters, I guess, um, uh, NanoMaster. Well, the, uh, little arm's cool. It just unfolds. And then you can actually unpeg it from its location. And then you fold the little arms up. They just always get in the way, don't worry too much. And once you've done that, you can take your Optimus Prime here and, oh, that's upside down. You want to plug it in to his back panel. Now what this will do is each of his little hands, if uh, you want, can sit on either side of him, uh, either side of his head, and they act as siege ports in a way. They're fake siege ports, but, you know, it's still... He gets... Uh... Hey, why'd you fall off? You stay in. That's a... That's a good thing. Yeah, good backpack. Good backpack. Alright. Boom. It's not great, but it works. So that's cool. Alright. Let's move into his transformation, finally. I just wanted to show off the cool little accessory of having a backpack and that will go back like this it's easy to connect this guy you will feel a couple of siege ports and you just have to plug it into those siege ports it's awesome whenever things work out like that you'll find them on if you extend the little arm for his backpack there are there's a flat area that has two five millimeter peg holes right next to each other and they just go right in like that. Then you can fold it down inside 
and fold the trailer back up. One more accessory about the trailer that needs to get discussed before we move on is his um, the trailer's back flap can pull off and become a little shield. Uh, I don't know what you would use this shield for, but you just grab the end of the trailer where you feel the airlock section. An airlock section is, well, you'll definitely feel it. It's the peg system that they use to connect these together. I'll discuss it more later. Uh, it makes a cool shield. He has a shield on his side. There it is. Let's get get the shield off. The shield, like, get, get the, come on, get, get, thank you. All right. Let's put this back. Come on, come on. No, no. There is a way, a right way and a wrong way to fold in the shield. And um, I keep doing it the wrong way by accident. Uh, the right way to fold in the shield is to, or slip the shield back into its place, is peg facing inside of the trailer. All right. Now we move into transformation. So to transform Optimus Prime. Earthrise mode. First off, you want to fold his arms back and raise them on their uh, shoulder pivots so that they face away. Cool. Once you've done that, go ahead and fold the hand up on the um, side of the forearm that's directly opposite the side of the forearm that has the siege port. There is a panel that folds out the uh, area to find the, the the place to fold the panel out is right next to the wrist because the hand is going to fold in and then that panel will fold shut. You want to do it on the other side, fold out the panel near the wrist, then close up the hand into a little fist and fold the hand inwards inside of the wrist and close the, well, into the forearm and close the panel. Once that is accomplished, we want to break him slightly. So, in the sense of he needs his back broken, or at least the top of his chest. So just grab his entire lower body in one hand, put your thumb right between both of his windows, right there in that nice sweet spot, and then put your finger on the siege port that is on his back, and then fold backwards, you know, and like snap it in half. You just don't snap it, snap it. You just have to lightly snap it in half. Once complete, you will find that he's got these, some cool stuff in here. So there's a weird little flappy doohickey that we will need to work on in a second. And that flappy doohickey simply is the back of his arch for his back. And we want to fold it. Oh. Mm, accomplished that the wrong way. He is a more complicated figure than the other guys. My mistake was go to his butt and unfold the wheels because Optimus you know, wheels are kind of bubbleless bubbles. So Optimus Prime Earthrise has a bubble butt. So unfold both of the wheels and then the the bumper will fold down. Once that is complete, that should give you a little more freedom to now twist his entire waist. 180 degrees so that the bumper is facing in the opposite direction from whence it once was facing. Once that is done, we want to then flip back his entire chest because we're going to do some stuff in here. Now there's two little flappy bits. They make up the uh, his back area. Once, you know, they make up his sides and they're really cool, but you can fold them. And all you do is you grab each of them with your thumb pads and you just push up and you'll notice that a little bit will fold upwards. And in folding upwards, this will reveal a couple of little pegs that are in there. Now that's going to be important later for the arms, but you just want to make sure that both of those panels are folded correctly and that they're folded back so that they kind of touch each other. Right below the hinge, that the entire top of the chest is on. Once that is complete, we then want to put our finger inside of his upper chest. You know, you fold the chest all the way backwards 
and there's a little negative square. Just put your finger in there and you will hear a little snap as you fold away this chunk of panels. Now that you folded away this chunk of panels, reach into the negative zone that's right in the middle of that and then pull your finger backwards and you will fold away another group of panels. Once you've done that, you want to take the first group of panels and reach inside of it and fold out two little panels. Fold them out all the way so that they lay flat. They are no longer on the inside. Now that that is complete, you want to take the little panel and make sure that it snaps in place. It will fold all the way until it snaps. There's a little pressure, but don't worry. Just follow the motions. Unfold both of the side panels there as well outwards, making sure that they lay flat across. This will make it easier to fold everything in place shortly. Now that that is done, you want to fold that grouping of panels down. Now you got like a very wide semi-truck feeling thing, like you can feel this grill and everything, but all the panels are all sorts of crazy. Now that that is done, go ahead and we're going to put the head away, now that we have room to put the head away into. So take that panel, or that part that has the siege port on his back, and right above there's a ridge. Put your thumbnail in that ridge and fold backwards. Once complete, take his entire head and fold it backwards and around. And it will go backwards, around, and rest inside of the negative zone that all of those panels used to be inside of. Once done, the top of the semi-truck should be flat. We are moving more into a truck mode now. Now, now that you've put the head away, you want to fold the panel assembly that contains the two front windows and the new grill of a truck downwards, and you will hear a snap, letting you know that it is in place. Once that is complete and in place, you then fold it forwards all the way. Now, once you've folded it down to connect it to the bumper that we unfolded earlier that has the two bubble butt tires, once that is complete, fold both legs backwards, or rotate them backwards, and so that their tires on the side of the legs are level with the two bubble butt tires. Once complete, go ahead and fold both of the toes inwards and downwards, and snap the legs together. You heard that nice, satisfying snap? This guy's filled with them. It's really helpful. Okay, now that the legs are in place, Let's work on these arms, because we can't be snapping panels down until these arms are put away. So, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the smokestack is facing towards the back of the truck area, and that that fist that you, you know, the, uh, the, the forearm where you folded the fist into, make sure the siege port on that is facing out, away from the center of the truck. And once that is complete, you want to just weevil it, you know, wiggle it in place. Now, you want to do the same with the other side. Siege port facing towards where the trailer will sit. Other two siege ports on the forearms facing away from the center of the vehicle. Make sure that everything is copacetic and in line. Now that that is complete, we start folding panels down. So. Next to the front windows, those two big panels, just fold them down. They are fit nicely into place. And then those lower panels next to the grill, just fold them down, and they will fit next nicely into place. There's even grooves cut in the forearms to allow the little thumbnail catch to help you unfold it later. Rest, and it smooths on out. Now that is done, fold both wheels down and push them into their appropriate peg holes that should have appeared. If they haven't, just move stuff around slightly until you find the two peg holes. But that part is one of the easiest parts to do. Once complete, take both of the... On his upper thighs, you'll feel that there is kind of a half round drum shape. Just unfold it from both sides. For some reason, mine are a bit loose, so they like to fold back, and I am a little sad by that. But once that is done, Wait, wait. Yep, yep, cool. Once that is done, you lay him flat on the ground, make sure everything is connected, 
and you will have a completed Optimus Prime Earthrise. Now, take his gun. Remember the gun we folded earlier? You'll feel that there's a long peg and a short peg. So plug the long peg into the siege port that was once on Optimus's back and is now situated between both of the, the uh, shoulders. And push it in. It will finish the filling out all of that negative space and fill out a little section of the interior that will be between the truck and the trailer. Now that that is done, let's get his trailer out. Where's your trailer at? Cool. Here's the trailer. Undo the trailer before we measure the... Before we get to the trailer, let's measure him in his current state. He sits... Boom. There we go. So that is going to be 17, 18, 19. All right. He is 19 studs long in his vehicle mode. Now, let's get his trailer on. You will easily, to put his trailer in, you will feel that there's a little bitty siege port, like a three millimeter siege port right between his legs. That's what you want right there. So you want to just, the trailer has these little stand, kickstand thing. You want to make sure you fold that in. Uh, fold it towards the tires. That's the best way to fold it inwards. And then take the little nubbin of a port, of a male port that was on the trailer and plug it into that little bitty thing, you know, the hole that's between both of his legs. Oh, that's phrasing. Now that's done. Let's measure him on the Lego pad, and he is huh, 32 studs long, maybe 33 studs long. I'd say 33, judging by how on each side he's lightly going over the sides. So he's 33 studs long with his vehicle, and with his trailer attached. Now let's find where you at, my friend? Where you at, Cliff Jumper? Ah, there's the cliff jumper. Now, cliff jumper, uh, we compare him to Optimus Prime on the side. We see that cliff jumper comes all the way from the the area where the back tail lights would be, under the trailer, to the uh, end of his fuel tank little thing on the side, that uh, that barrel shaped thing that I, I explained earlier. So from the tips of Optimus Prime's feet in truck mode to that is how long Cliff Jumper is. But wait, there's more. The Cliff Jumper is small enough to. Okay, this is a slight problem with the Earthrise. I'll mention it right now. Sometimes, in order to unfold his back tailgate, you will have to unfold the trailer slightly. Now, you just drive him in there, and he just. Works nicely in there. It's pretty cool. And you uh, sadly can't fit many different types of Autobots in here, or any vehicles really, except for the cliff jumper mold. Now we can also take out his backpack, and once that's taken out, things can change in here because we can have enough space to park a cliff jumper and. We could take Bumblebee here. Bumblebee's going to go on a ride. He's just going to stand in the back. Uh, he can crouch. Bumblebee? Crouch. Crouch for the cameras, Bumblebee. You can do it. Don't be camera shy. All right. Maybe Bumblebee can't crouch too well. Maybe Cliff Jumper's not giving him enough hands. Let's see. All right. I'm just going to crouch him down like that. Cool. Fall out of the truck. He, all right. he doesn't fit in in robot mode. I haven't really played with that too much. But there is room enough for another cliff jumper mold in there if you unfold him. Whenever I have Bumblebee transformed into vehicle mode, I like to carry both of them inside of the inside of the trailer. I think it's kind of cool. So once again, to put the pieces back, you just slide the uh, siege ports into the siege pegs and we are nearly done let's discuss 
siege ports and pegs now. There is a siege peg on the back of the flap to open and shut the trailer. That's a peg. Now let's talk about ports. So there are four ports on either side of his trailer battle base mode. On the inside, now we close that up. Close the door, make sure everything's nice and shut. Take it off the stand, flip it upside down. And we're at four. Then we have five, one between the wheels, six, seven, one on either side of the trailer, underside, and that's it. So the trailer itself has seven siege ports. Not bad. As, as accessory pieces go, seven's a pretty, pretty awesome number. I wish there were more on the outside so you could do things like, you know, set up a kickstand thing like you could plug some weapons into the top corners to make for kickstands so that it wasn't so floppy on the sides which i remember the original one also having similar problems when i was younger now to optimus prime himself in his vehicle mode he has uh i think those are siege ports now available on the back of his legs. Now we tried those earlier, they didn't work. So, he's got one between on between his two back arms, then two, three, near the back of each shoulder, then four and five on the forearms that he has. He has no siege ports in the front, and it's a possibility that I was wrong with the back and he may have a siege port there. Let's use the Energon goodies. They have a five millimeter port and they're easy to move around and close at hand. So let's see, was I wrong? I was wrong. Between both of the back tires, he has a siege port. So that's two, four, six, seven. Vehicle mode has seven. His trailer mode has seven. So we have a winner for most siege ports in vehicle mode now, coming to 14, if you count both the truck and the trailer. So, I like siege ports in vehicle modes. That is that is my jam. Give me, give me a tank, or give me something that has a lot of cool siege ports. We can really deck this guy out. Now, the final comparison I have right here, my other Optimus Prime that I got. Now, I got the Siege uh, spoiler box guy for Nemesis Prime because, well, I wanted Nemesis Prime. It came with this trailer. It didn't fit well with the Nemesis Prime. And then I got Shattered Glass Optimus because I wanted an Earthrise Ratchet mold. So, of course, I couldn't find an Earthrise Ratchet mold anywhere, but I found a Shattered Glass Earthrise Ratchet mold, and it just happened to come with a Shattered Glass Optimus Prime, which happens to fit the trailer from Earthrise Optimus Prime. So here is Shattered Glass Earthrise Optimus Prime in his truck mode. And he is straight up just as evil as Optimus Prime is good, alternate universe stuff. You know, he wears a goatee and all. But anyway, guys, that's all. Um, I would say that this is next to Cyclonus, a very complicated transformation, mainly because there's all these little intricate steps that need to be taken and so i would say this is the uh it's going to be a step above cyclonus in intricacies of transformation uh it's going to rank right up there next to the voyager optimus prime though i still think that the voyager optimus prime from siege was a bit more complicated than this earthrise optimus prime so i would say this earthrise optimus prime sits between kingdom cyclonus and siege optimus prime in complications and for the way i feel about it this is the f this is the scent of newly opened bag of coffee not not the taste of the first sip of coffee in a day it's not that good it's just as good as that scent of the first opened coffee but i am blind prime and this has been blind formers i hope you've enjoyed and please if you wouldn't mind do that thing everyone says to do at the end of videos and comment below. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.